child when I need help with my child or I've got my own responsibility and my own issues, my own problems I've got to deal with. Somebody just talk to me about that. What do you think the solution is for them when someone wants to be involved, uh, but they feel that they have too many things that they have to do themselves? Hey, can I read a comment yes, that we can. received on Facebook? This is from Mr. Kevin Jackson from Chicago. He says parents or a parent that will actually hold themselves accountable for raising productive citizens in our society is the key and the foundation. What do you guys think about that? I agree with that, but the problem is is finding those parents, finding a parent finding a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, a next-door neighbor. Like you said, it takes a village to raise a child. So you have to find someone who's going to be that responsible one to pick up where the other people have left off. Amen. And, you know, again, I say that uh, um, we uh, in the church, we need to step up and and be more accountable for our children. I think Daryl, uh, Reverend uh, Scarborough was saying uh, last week is that, um, and I almost forgot what he just said that quick. He was just saying that the church is not uh, out there. The kids are not paying tithes. They're not, you know, they're not doing anything that's responsible to the church or financially, you know, stable for the church to grow. And so sometimes they may forget the youth, but that is the backbone of your church's success by putting some time into them. And so we need to find a way to uh, get the children more responsible, but we also have to have the people that are in the church to realize is that if your church is going to continue to grow, you've got to put an effort and some dedication and time in that child now, because if we don't do it, the world will. I, I totally agree with that. Uh, I think I said last week that uh, I used to be a youth group leader with my ex-husband, and we had a group of kids, and those kids were responsible to the church. If we did a fundraiser, they had to give part of that fundraiser back to the church. When things came up that uh, the church needed, we had to be there to participate. So no one ever forgot that the youth existed. And matter of fact, they always called on them to come out to events, come out and do things. And when it came time for them to need money, the church gave back. The problem is, though, as the youth got older, they left the church. They found other things. They went to college. They forgot the upbringing that they had. And it was hard to bring them back until they were parents themselves. So we got to figure out a way where we don't lose them in between 18 and 25 to 30. And I'm glad you said that because one of the faults that the church has right now is that we don't believe in trying to grab the youth where they are. And this this stigma and this negative word called entertaining people, it seems like the church doesn't even want to do that. But the word entertaining just means to grab the attention of. And the Bible was all about grabbing the attention. But now we don't want to do that. We're letting the world grab them. And we want to sit there and say, we don't want to do that. But we've got to find a way to use that word entertainment or entertaining them to draw them into the church. And that's one of the things I do love about Salem Baptist Church, where we go to. We have so many programs out there for the children. They can do step dance, they can dance, they can sing. There's talent shows. There's all kinds of things that are bringing them in there, which really helps out. Baby, you got something you want to say? I got something to say. (laughs) Tell them you awesome, because you could have a live band, marching band. Man from high school play at cell. Remember that? Yeah, that's and true. Like, but but hey. what it but what it does is is that it, it it brings that child into the church. They don't. You're not just sitting up there saying, "And the Lord said, let right. there be light." There's entertainment that comes in, and I think what we're missing in the church today is that we put a stigma too much on that word. But the world is grabbing all of our youth, all of our children, even adults now. They're being entertained by the world, but we want to look at it as we can't do that because that's not of God. I, and, and, and that's just terrible for us to think that there way. There are certain ways that you can entertain. And with all the programs and stuff that Salem has, Salem should, can take those programs and go out there where these youth are and provide those programs to them. There are places where they know kids will be. 
Uh, unfortunately, the juvenile detention center is a place where you can spend a lot of kids. <laughs> yeah. And you know? you know what? If I can just share, it's one of the um, teens growing up actually in Salem, and I actually started doing rap music at Salem. It wasn't a thing of entertainment because I'm an arts fanatic. I love all different forms of arts, but I believe that what you do to get them is what you have to do to keep to them. Keep and them. unfortunately, if you entertain them, you have to continue to entertain them, and entertainment does not always teach them. Them, what they're supposed to know in order for them to act out what they know. And so I believe, just like I learned, is that I didn't use rap music as a form of entertainment because of the love that I have for God. I expressed it through my gifts and my talents. Thus, you have rap music coming out. You have dance coming out. And you can tell the difference between those who entertain and those who really express what they know for God through their entertainment, through their uh, talent. And so I just want to say this because we were talking about mental mentorship um the word has forgotten a big word that the bible uses it's called discipleship we are called to make disciples life one-on-one and the reason why um our teens and our youth are falling by the wayside is because we're not allowing our lives to be one-on-one with them shown before them we tell them what to do but we don't bring them in bring them into our homes bring them into our workplaces bring them into our troubles and how we handle it we don't teach them how we handle adversity and hardship and walk them through it that they can overcome it and if we get back to discipleship the way that God called us to then a lot of this will cease I think that's an excellent idea because I know um, I don't go to Salem I go to First Emmanuel Lutheran Church and we are a very um, my old church uh, how can I say it? A very structured type there. church. Very. And and love my very, church, in case yeah. you're listening. We, we, we were there. <laughs> right. Before. But we had a difficult time in bringing new stuff in. And my um, youngest girls were like one of the first group of girls that praise danced in the church because they went to Lutheran schools where the praise dancing was just, the you know, everybody did it. So when we brought it into the church, oh, my oh, wow. God. First Emmanuel was praise Yes. Dance. And they were like, oh, no. But once those girls did it, Every year they were like, are the girls praise dancing? Are the girls praise dancing? So we've got to learn to move with the times because I think rap music, you know, for the children in church, I think that's an excellent idea because we've got to relate to them on their level, and I think that's the mistakes that we're making. And, I, you know, I, I want to go to something right now because uh, Valanda is um, a person that does gospel rap. All right. uh, I've been knowing her for a long time. We went out to the prisons with each other. And that's where we got started at. They start going to East Moline Correctional Center with me and rapping. And it was just awesome. Now, they don't remember the nick- nickname they gave me was uh, Reverend No Rap. <laughs> 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 because I couldn't rap. But, but you Yolanda, we're about to go to one of your songs right now, which is called right. Cities Cry, right? Right. Give me just a brief synopsis of that before we go to it. A City's Cry is a song written about um, true stories actually here in Chicago about teens who were um, murdered just too early. They died just too early of senseless crimes. And so this song is really a cry out to the church to let them know that we do have the power to do something. Hey, Nate, you got that song ready? It's all ready to go, sir. We're got, right now, we're going to play Belanda Van Carr, A City's Cry. Woo! Two 18-year-olds were shot and killed on Friday night outside of a church in the city's South Shore neighborhood. That's what hurts if you just don't get the cat out of the way. In addition to the shootings, early Sunday morning on the 1900 block of West Winona, a young couple was stabbed and critically injured. There's a sound that I hear coming from the streets. And it's the sound of the cries of those who die by gang-related shootings. The goals and the dreams that'll never be fulfilled. The memories linger on of an innocent child that was killed. Can you feel the hurt and the pain, the anger, the rage of a mother who accidentally calls her dead child's name? How strange. On the day set aside to celebrate her birth, it's the same day she was taken away we from this, this body back earth. To the ground. Ashes to ashes, ashes, dust dust to dust. dust. Who will be the next victim on a white tee airbrushed for a bullet? Has no name, a gunman's aim can stray. That's how a 14-year-old was killed by an AK. Oh, 
imagine being 19 and shot in the head or 18 years old found in a church parking lot dead it was once said that it took a village to raise a child but the village has turned its back now the child's gone wild meanwhile we point fingers and everyone shifts the blame instead of coming up with solutions we sit and complain what a shame what happened to the days when people pray and march for a cause until it brought about a change no games, games drugs, drugs hoodlums drugs, or thugs thugs. can sin against the prayers of those the righteous ones for greater is he that lives in thee than he that lives in the world hit your knees petition the lord Thy help will come Boy, he's a God. To the corruption that's around And we don't consider it a crime Until it directly affects our lives But crimes from the city are increasing Can't you hear it? And the only way to defeat it Is to tap into the spirit So I pray Heal the pain of a man That will cause him to take a life in revenge Heal the poverty in the city That caused drug dealers to sell to our children Lose the truth inside That would destroy every lie And bind the rebellion That caused children to disrespect their parents Lose the spirit of love That will bring about a change And cause young men and women To leave their games I know it's strange But the power of God can do anything Touch and agree Intercede with me He'll hear the plea and heal the city If my people Which I call by my name Show humble themselves and pray Seek my faith Turn from their wicked ways Then will I hear from heaven Hey, 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 welcome back to the Let's Stay Together show where we are learning the rhythms of relationships. I just received a text real quick, and it was a great great one by Talise Cow. One of her comments were, grandmamas are tired. Yes, they they are. didn't raise their children, and they don't want to raise their grandchildren. But because they are God-fearing women, they're actually going to raise their grandchildren and help their children out if they are willing to go to work and willing to do what they need to do. Now, we left off with a debate here. Hold on a sec. Uh, Nate, you know know I'm going to ask you this. What what you saying, man? We have four minutes before we go to 8 o'clock. Oh, four minutes before we go to 8 (laughs) o'clock. As they interrupt my spill here. Go ahead. Sorry about that. As we left off, thank you, Talise, because that's great. Grandmothers grandmothers out there, we know you're tired. You want to tell your children, raise your own kids, but you can't do that because you love them. But we left off with um, Belanda talking about the passion of her arts of learning loving all arts and rapping now some people think that rapping is the beginning to the end and part of the problem because they linked it up with entertainment and the media and the media always paints a bad picture and negativity with glorification of bad rapping glorification of guns the b-words money they depict everything negative but you're giving us a different spin on this a positive christian spin on it that i think that a lot of people really need to hear and he got three fingers up so i'm gonna shoot it back to you belanda give me all that passion you just gave us on the break about (laughs) um yeah i just want the um the people to know that the enemy the world they don't have any creative power everything that was created was made by God and it was made for him and so what we see are perverted versions of something that God created and if we are the church will learn our identity and who we are and whose we are and that which God has gifted us to do and to be Um, I love Ephesians 2 10 it says we are his workmanship we are his poema we are his work of art and so God created all this beauty all of this art and he wants us to use it to glorify him and unfortunately the church has taught us that Um, We can't. 